The Inan begins with Masamune admiring his perfect muscular body in the mirror, although his sister Chinatsu teases him. At that moment, their mom Kinu enters the room as the breakfast is ready, and to Masamune's horror, it is a very sweet and fried breakfast, so he refuses to eat and goes to school. Masamune doesn't want to eat things that are so high in calories in the morning, since that would lead to him gaining weight and for him, his appearance is everything. When he arrives at school, he praises the girls who are playing tennis and they blush because the new boy is complimenting them. Suddenly, he sees a crowd of students gathering in front of the school building and a girl appears with a microphone in her hand. According to whispers, she is the cruel princess, known for rejecting boys in public. This time, she rejects a boy, telling everyone that he is an otaku and has hair on a mole, therefore, she gives him the nickname Molio. Later, Masamune falls asleep for a while during recess and dreams about when he was a boy and a girl rejected him by calling him Pig's Foot. When he wakes up, the class representative, Futaba, tells him that she is glad that he fell asleep in the classroom because that means that he already feels comfortable with them. After that, a boy named Kojiro comes in and gives Masamune a sandwich for lunch and he can only think about all the crunches he'll have to do to eliminate the carbs from it. Kojiro then tells Masamune that he is handsome, intelligent, and good at sports, which makes him similar to the cruel princess, although they both have different personalities. Suddenly, said princess enters accompanied by her assistant Yoshino and brings a love letter, ready to reject a boy who confessed to her he is Tanam Aikyo. Aiki mocks Tanabe, rips up the love letter, and nicknames him Pudding Prince. When she leaves, Kojiro and Futaba tell Masamune that she is Aki Adagaki, the girl with the best grades in their year and her father is the head of the Adagaki group. Masamune is surprised to hear Aki's name and can't believe he ran into her so soon. The next day, Masamune observes Aki carefully and notices that many girls follow her and Kojiro tells her that her girls admire her for being so blunt. Then Masamune asks for more information about Aki, but Kojiro says that he only knows that she likes to eat lunch alone. After that, Masamune looks for her throughout the school until he sees Yoshino carrying a bag with food to his storage room. Inside it is Aki waiting impatiently. Unfortunately, Masamune sees a spider and gets so scared that he reveals himself in front of Aki, but she is not the only one surprised. It turns out that behind Aki, there are several empty food boxes, and she confesses that she must eat a lot or else her stomach roars non-stop. But that confession doesn't come free. She tells him that if he tells anyone, he will regret it. So as the days go by, Masamune tries to be friendly with her so much so that a rumor reaches Kojiro's ears. In PE class, he tells Masamune that many think the cruel princess will finally fall for him, but in reality, she is just as mean to him as she is to everyone else and he thinks that girls see love everywhere. Suddenly, a volleyball hits his head and Masamune realizes that it was Tanabi and thinks that it's not just girls who see love everywhere. Later, after class, Aki asks Yoshino to go get her more food since she's hungry again, and her assistant obeys her. Alone, Tanabi appears in front of Aki and complains that she is too friendly with Masamune and accuses her of only looking at appearances. She tries to call him Puddin Prince again, and that makes Tanabi angrier. Suddenly, he pulls her hair and takes out scissors to cut it, but fortunately, Masamune arrives and stops him by grabbing the scissors with his hand. That scares Tanabi, who runs away in terror when he sees that Masamune is injured. He tries to stay cool and tells Aki that she looks cuter when she smiles, making her blush and then leaves when Yoshino arrives. At home, he looks at a photo of him and Aki when they were children. Back then, he was very different, he was plump and very rich, while Aki was a cute girl who protected him from But one day, he confessed his feelings to her, and she rejected him by calling him a pig's foot. He has held a grudge against her since that day, and now it is time to get revenge on her. He will make Aki fall madly in love with him and then reject her spectacularly in front of everyone. The next day, Masamune is asked about the wound on his hand and he says that he fell and even greets Tanabi kindly. After that, he goes to his locker and finds an anonymous letter. On it, there is a single phrase written, Pig's Foot. Masamune is paranoid and suspicious of everyone and cannot stop imagining the consequences if others find out about his dark past. He is so distracted thinking about these things that he does not realize that the teacher is asking him to read something. Later, while he drinks her juice and remembers the hard training his grandfather put him through to lose weight, he sees how all the students crowd in the school cafeteria trying to buy lunch. Among them is Yoshino, but she is so small and weak that she is pushed to the floor. She is disoriented, so she asks him to buy the nine sandwiches for Aki. After buying them, he asks her to let him accompany her, and that scares her, which makes him feel sorry for her, and he imagines that she is Cinderella being by her evil stepsister. So he assures her that he just wants to talk to Aki, and Yoshino accepts. When they arrive at the gym storage room, Aki eagerly begins to devour the sandwiches and almost chokes, so Yashino runs to buy drinks. Alone, Masamune and Aki chat normally, and that makes him rule her out as a suspect in the authorship of the letter. When Yashino returns, she also gives Masamune a drink, and Aki says sullenly that she is very loyal. That bothers Masamune, but he remembers his plan to make her fall in love with him. So he approaches her and caresses her cheek, saying that he wishes she could lean on him too. 
As he leaves, she can hear her startled scream and imagines her as red as a tomato. Later, on the way home, Masamun falls into a trap and is left hanging from a tree, and a hooded girl approaches him calling him a pig's foot. She is Yoshino. Then he tries to remember if he ever saw Yoshino, and when remembering the photo that he looks at every day, he realizes that Yoshino was always there and the shadows spying on them. Yoshino tells him that her family has served Aki's family for generations, and that deflates Masamun as he thinks his revenge plan has come to an end. But she surprises them by encouraging him to continue. The next day, Masamun decides not to trust Yoshino and follows his plan alone. His next step is to get Aki's cell phone number, but that is a very difficult thing for him to do, since he never did it. Then he tries to ask Futaba, but regrets it at the last minute. Later, an opportunity falls from the sky for Masamun. A member of the school committee has decided to abandon his position and he quickly takes it since Aki is a member too. At cleaning time, Masamun tries to be friendly with Aki, but she ignores him, so he goes to clean one of the empty classrooms. Suddenly, Futaba enters and embarrassedly asks him to go out with her on a date. He almost accepts but remembers that he has a revenge to fulfill and can't go out with other girls, so he shyly rejects her, and she leaves. To Masamun's surprise, Aki heard everything and compliments him on his popularity, but he acts gallant and says that he is not interested in dating girls he is not interested in. Then, Aki slyly takes the bait and asks who he wants to date, and he replies that he wouldn't mind go out with her. She smiles sweetly at him and thanks him, and in order not to miss the rhythm of his plan, he asks for her cell phone number. But she says that her cell phone is being repaired and says that she will give to him in a week. A week later, Masamun waits all day for Aki in that classroom, but she does not appear until he realizes that she left him a note, which takes him somewhere else and so on. He follows the instructions until they take him to look outside the window. Outside, Aki shows him a sign where she says she rejects him. Masamun feels frustrated for having fallen into Aki's trap, but at that moment, Yoshino appears and tells him that he was very naive, and what he should have done is ask her for Aki's number. And to surprise him even more, she writes her own cell number on his cell phone. Days later, Futaba tells the students that there will be extra classes for students who fail the exams. Masamune is not worried, but Kojiro confesses that if he does not pass the next exam, he will have to take those classes. Then Masamune decides to take him to the library to study, and they meet Aki and Yoshino, since the assistant is in the same condition as Kojiro. Aki makes fun of Masamune's intelligence, and he proposes a team competition. If he and Kojiro get better grades than the two of them, Aki will go on a date with him. But on the contrary, if the boys lose, Aki will be able to give him a nickname and stick it on his back for a year. Aki likes that, but it includes her own claws. If she and Yoshino win, Masamune will have to buy her lunch for an entire year. That's fine with him, because he thinks Yoshino will help him. Unfortunately, that night Yoshino calls him and tells him that she will not help him in this situation, so Masamune has no choice but to study and make Kojiro study as much as he can. The days go by, and both teams study hard. On the day of the exam, Masamu's mother makes her son a low-calorie lunch because she knows that he has very important exams today. After taking the morning exams, Masamu and Kojiro have lunch and he goes to buy a drink and runs into Yoshino. She buys him a coffee and he apologizes for having asked her for help, but she mysteriously says that nothing matters anymore. Later, when it's time to take the last math test, Masamu starts to feel stomach pain and urges to go to the bathroom, so he thinks Yoshino put a laxative in his coffee. After finishing the exam and condition, he goes to Aki's classroom to complain about playing dirty. But a girl tells him that Aki didn't come because she had a fever, and suddenly he receives a message from his sister, telling him that the eggs on his lunch were in bad condition. Days later, Masamum and Aki meet in the classroom to take the supplementary classes. Since she did not show up for the math exam, he failed because of the bad eggs. The next day, Masamum and Aki have a date, all planned by Yoshino, since she told Aki that Masamum was so after failing the exam that only a date from her would cure him and she told him to go to a place to meet her. But the date that Yoshino planned is very strange. She made Aki dress like a magical girl, because according to her, it is a tradition for girls to dress like that on their first date. And then she rented a movie theater, for just the two of them. And the movie was about passionate zombies. After that, Aki and Masamun go to eat, and he asks her since when did she start eating so much, and she says that it was because of something that happened to her when she was a child, but they are interrupted by a little girl who asks Aki why she is dressed so strange. Then Masamun confesses to Aki that what Yoshino told her is not true, and it embarrasses Aki so much that he takes her to buy clothes, but she is so uncomfortable that he goes in to ask her if she's okay, earning him a punch from Aki. Later, when he wakes up, he does so with his head in Aki's but when she sees him awake, she quickly leaves. At night, Masamun calls Yoshino, and she tells him that if he can humble Aki, it will benefit her greatly. Days later, Masamun stays up late reading his favorite romance manga because that's where he gets the ideas to make Aki fall in love with him. So the next day, he keeps staring at Aki, and later he gives her his umbrella since she didn't bring one, and it's raining a lot. At night, he meets up with Yoshino, and she tells him that he should step back because according to Aki, he is being creepy, so Yoshino advises him to be cold to her. 
The next day, Aki tries to return Masamune's umbrella, but he pretends not to hear her and ignores her. Later in supplementary classes, he continues to ignore Aki, and that make him anxious because he thinks that he is destroying everything he has built until now. And when he meets up with Aki and Yoshino later, she acts the same as usual and Yoshino warns him with her eyes to stay away. During the day, he continues to ignore Aki, which makes her angrier with each passing hour, so in the afternoon, she corners him and tearfully asks him why he is ignoring her. He can't believe that the cruel princess is tearing and he says he did it on purpose, and before he says anything else, she asks him what he likes about her and he doesn't know what to answer, so he runs away. Later, he meets up with Yoshino, and she can't believe that he is so stupid, and tells him that he should think about how to tell her what he likes about her. The next day, Masamune writes a letter to Aki, but she throws it in the trash without reading it. Masamune then runs to talk to Yoshino and she says that she will fix everything and asks him to stay out of it, which exasperates him because this is his revenge and he won't let Yoshino leave him out. On the other hand, Aki skips class to be alone for a while and think about what she is feeling. Yesterday, she saw how Masamune and Yoshino got together to talk and seem very close. At that moment, Yoshino appears and tells her that she has been seeing Masamune and that hurts Aki, although she doesn't want to show it and Yoshino knows it. So she tells her that Masamune only has eyes for her and she shouldn't worry because he only seeks her for advice. Although that does not appease Aki's sadness since she promised herself when she was a little girl to not suffer for a boy again since they suddenly leave you without telling you anything, and since she does not want it to happen again, she says loudly that he doesn't care, but Yoshino was already gone. Then Aki walks home without stopping thinking about the past, she always hurt others before they did. Suddenly, she crosses the street without realizing that the light is red, but before a car hits her, Masamune appears and saves her from it. He scolds her and tells her that she is very important to him which makes her blush, but their moment is interrupted by a girl. She runs to them apologizing and hugs Masamune, although he doesn't know her. The mysterious girl thanks God for reuniting her with Masamune, although he thinks she mistook him for someone else. Then the girl's bodyguard takes her away, leaving Masamune confused and Aki angry. After that, Aki leaves angry without believing Masamune that he doesn't know that girl. The next day, he buys Aki a lot of sandwiches since she won't be able to refuse to talk to him if he gives her food. But when he arrives at the gym storage room, he is stopped by Yoshino since she has the order not to let him get close to Aki. Then he tells her what happened with the mysterious girl, and that also angers Yoshino, since she doesn't believe him either and accuses him of not understanding the situation. When she leaves, Masamune decides to leave the sandwiches at the door and leave too, and Aki grabs them without him seeing her. The next day, Masamune has dark circles under his eyes because he didn't sleep even a little, plus he can't stop thinking about the mysterious girl. Suddenly, the mysterious girl enters the classroom introducing herself. She is Fujinomi and Niko, a transfer student. On their break, Masamune wants to talk to her, but she is soon surrounded by a bunch of her girls admiring her. During the next break, Masamune tries to talk to Nico again, and the girls tell him that according to the new girl, she transferred schools because of him. It turns out that three years ago, Nico was asking for donations for a good cause and a handsome boy gave her his jacket to protect her from the cold, and since that moment, she has been looking for him. Then Masamune runs with her somewhere else to talk privately, but she weakens and starts coughing something red which scares him a lot, and when he is about to call an ambulance, he stops because she said that the red liquid was ketchup. After clearing up the misunderstanding, he asks her why she tells lies about them, and she says it's to hide the truth, but that doesn't change her yearning for him. Even though Nico is very cute, Masamune rejects her because he must focus on his revenge and tells her that he likes someone else. This saddens Nico, although she asks him to show her the girl in question, and he takes her to Aki's classroom, he thinks that upon seeing Aki, she will give up on him. On the contrary, Nico sees Aki and thinks that it will be easy to get rid of her and enters the classroom to introduce herself and tell Aki that she envies that she has Masamune's affection. Suddenly, a gust of wind lifts Nico, showing Aki and Masamune her which makes him blush and Aki becomes more upset with her. Then she leaves and Masamune chases after her saying that he doesn't know Nico, but Aki doesn't believe him and accidentally punch a teacher. Later, as punishment, the teacher sends them to clean the pool. Aki is still angry with him, so she gets as far away from him as she can, but he wets her with the hose. Then she fills a bucket with water and once again wet too, but she slips and falls into the pool. She seems to sink so Masamune jumps in to save her, but she gets out of the pool on her own. She mocks him because he didn't want to get wet and he says that his body jumped on its own and yells at her that if he said he saved her because he liked her, she wouldn't believe him. That leaves her speechless and she says that if he likes her, he should show it to her, and since he doesn't know what she means, she says that he could kiss her. Masamune panics because he always believed that his revenge plan would end with Aki asking him to kiss her and him rejecting her, but now she wants him to kiss her in the middle of his plan and he must do it. Then he imagines that she is a ham and tries to kiss her, but she panics and punches him. Fortunately for both of them, Futaba and the swim team show up asking for the pool and before leaving, Aki tells Masamune that she does think he likes her, but she doesn't care. After that, Masamune goes to dry in the sun and Niko appears and gives him a supplementary 
drink, since it is not good to lower his temperature. So if he asks her a trick question, he asks her what she likes about him, and it is something impossible to answer because they don't know each other. But on the contrary, Nico says that she likes that he is so modest that he doesn't know his own charms. With that, she leaves leaving him confused. Later, Nico is followed by Yoshino. She wants to find out what Nico is up to. But when they arrive at Masamun's house, Yoshino is discovered by Nico and her bodyguard. Nico says that it must be hard being Eiki's assistant and Yoshino asks her what she wants from Masamun. To which Nico insists that he saved her a few years ago, generating more distrust in Yoshino. Suddenly, Masamun's mother sees them outside and takes them inside the house. When Masamun gets home, he thinks that he came to the wrong house because it is not possible that Yoshino and Nico are cooking in his kitchen. Then he takes Yoshino to his room and she explains to him that his mom thought that she and Nico were his fans running around the house and decided to teach them how to cook fried shrimp. Masamun gets exasperated and wants to get them out of the house quickly, but Yoshino is surprised to see his room full of exercise machines. Suddenly, Nico enters the room too and says that it is a perfect room for rehabilitation, which scares Masamun and takes them both out of there. After that, they sit down to eat, but the food is so high in calories that Masamun takes the fried breading off the shrimp, while Nico just eats a bunch of supplement pills and vitamins with tea. This angers Kinyu, but she soon calms down because Yoshino eats her food. Then, Chinatsu suggests ending the night by playing with fireworks in the yard and gets the girls to put on yukatas and play whoever spits out the watermelon sees the fastest. Masamune internally thanks his sister for taking the girls out of the house and can't stop admiring Nico. She seems like a kind and pretty girl, and maybe if she weren't a liar, he would fall for her. In any case, that doesn't matter because he should focus on Aki. Later, Nico's butler picks her up and she leaves, stealing a photo of Aki and Masamune when they were children. On the other hand, Masamune accompanies Yoshino to the main road to take a taxi and she asks him not to get entangled by Nico. Meanwhile at home, Kinyu and Chinatsu are happy for Masamune because they thought he would be a lonely boy although Kinyu is sure that she knows one of the girls from before. The next day, Masamun corners Aki and tells her that he likes that she is so modest that she doesn't realize her charms, but she glares at him saying that she won't fall for that cliché phrase when she does know her true value. Outside, Yoshino can't believe Masamun would be foolish enough to steal Nico's answer. Days later, summer finally begins and Masamun's plan continues with a new plot, spending the summer with Aki. Previously, he left Aki a pamphlet to go to the beach together, but she rejects him saying that she is going to spend her summer on a remote island and wants to take Kojiro with her. But poor Kojiro panics and hugs Masamune saying that he will go with Masamune. Then Masamune says that they are a package deal which frustrates Eki. Suddenly, Neko and Futaba invite themselves and Masamune dares her to say no, something the kind Eki wouldn't do. So she agrees to let them all go with her to the island. Days later, everyone takes a yacht that will take them to the island and Yashima talks alone with Masamune to tell him that she has been investigating Nico for days and was unable to find a connection between him and her, nothing explains her attachment to him. Then he says that she should not worry, his revenge will not be shaken by Nico. But Yoshino warns him that if he does not advance with Aki on the island, she will tell the whole truth to Aki. On the island, they are greeted by Yuzaki, Aki's father's secretary. She looks kind, but inside, she is an angry woman. Masamune can't stop thinking about Yoshino's warning, so he decides to be bolder and introduces himself to Yuzaki as Aki's boyfriend. This leaves everyone speechless. But Yuzaki says that she's glad Aki is over her boy-hating phase. That makes Aki blush, so she takes Masamune somewhere else and complains to him about what he did. But he slyly says that she could have denied it, but she didn't and that's because she likes to keep up appearances. Aki does not deny it and says that this will all be an act, and if he takes advantage of the situation, she will deny their relationship in front of everyone. Later, they all put on their s*** and go to the beach, but Nico clings to Masamune and starts flirting with him. Fortunately for him, Aki appears and separates them, reminding Nico that they are dating. If Yuzaki sees her offering herself that way, she will think that Masamune is a while Nico will be seen as the girl played, something embarrassing for the Fujinomiya family. After that, Aki takes Masamune to a place far from the beach and orders him to bring her the food that Yusuaki cooked for her and Masamune does it because he is already used to it. And when Yusuaki says that he surely loves Aki too much to please her this way, he just sighs. Then he asks what teenage things they can do on the island and an evil smile tries to appear on Yusuaki's face, but she holds it back and tells him that they can take a courage test. Masamune thinks it's a great idea and brings the food to Aki, but what he doesn't know is that this courage test is a plan by Yusuaki to keep him away from Aki. Because when she started working with Aki's family, she met a very sad Aki because her plump friend had left her without telling her anything, which caused Aki to hate all the boys, and that's something that suits Yusuaki because she hates them too. At night, everyone gets together to enter the haunted house where Yusuaki is waiting for them, with a mask to scare Masamune and make him look ridiculous in front of Aki. But everything goes wrong because Yoshino also wears a mask and scares Yusuaki. The woman runs away horrified and runs into Niko, who spills some ketchup from her mouth but Yusuaki thinks it's 
and the poor woman f***s in fear. When she opens her eyes, she is being carried on Masamune's back, and he confesses that he asked Yoshino to help scare Aki, so that he can save her and look like a hero. That makes Yusuaki feel guilty, since apparently Masamune is a good boy and really in love with Aki. As the days pass, the trip on the island has ended and Masamune is unable to advance with Aki, but fortunately Yoshino tells him that she will not tell the truth to Aki, and insists that he improve his plan. Back in the city, Masamune receives a call from Aki, which leaves him so surprised that he takes a while to answer. She says that they should meet because he forgot some clothes on the island and she wants to return them to him. That same night, he goes to talk to Yoshino and tells her the good news about Aki, but she is worried and asks him to process carefully. Upon returning home, he starts doing his summer school homework and realizes that the photo of him with Aki is not in his drawer. The next day, Aki and Masamu meet at a cafe and she returns in his clothes, but he can't stop thinking about the lost photo and suspects that Miko stole it. While he continues not paying attention to Aki, she tells him that Futaba invited them to go to the pool, but she gets angry because he doesn't answer anything, so she leaves. Suddenly, Masamu receives a call from Miko to invite him to the pool with Futaba, but instead, he asks to meet her right now. Then Masamune arrives at Neko's house and makes up the excuse that he just wanted to visit her, and while she boils tea, he begins to look for her room to recover high photo. He quickly finds Nico's room since her desk is full of pills and vitamins, but he also finds his favorite manga. Unfortunately, Nico enters the room and he stops pretending and asks her for his photo, and she pulls it out of her dress and tells him that she stole it because he looks so cute. He doesn't believe her because when he was a child, he was very chubby, but Nico doesn't care about that, which almost makes him cry, since no one ever told him that. Suddenly, Nico kisses him, this is Masamune's first kiss, and he can't believe how soft a girl's lips are. Then she throws him onto the bed and climbs on top of him. He lets her do it, since nothing matters for a tiny moment, not even his revenge. But the memories of his hard childhood assault him, and he walks away from Miko. He tells her that he realized that she doesn't really like him, and she doesn't know what to answer, which shows him that it is true. He gets up and leaves, and she accuses him of choosing Aki, and he confesses that this is his revenge. Miko lies there crying and wondering if this is the famous heartbroken that she read so much about. The next day, all the friends meet outside the pool and Futaba tells them that Nico won't come because she feels bad and Masamune feels a little guilty. They spend the day having fun, though Masamune feels a little uncomfortable and doesn't want to tell Yoshino what happened yesterday. At the end of the day, Nico's bodyguard, Shidu, arrives at the pool and accuses Masamune of having done something to Nico, since she has been missing since last night. And the worst thing is that she left without her medicine for her seizures, which leaves Masamune confused since he never knew she was sick. Shidu then questions him and tells him that she knows that the two of them met alone yesterday in her apartment, which surprises everyone. Masamune feels cornered and decides to tell the truth. He tells them that he rejected Nico yesterday because he will always choose Aki. Aki didn't like it at all that Masamune and Nico met alone in her apartment, so she completely ignores his confession and makes a plan to look for Nico in cool places, leaving Masamune aside. Hours later, Masamune searches for Nico alone but cannot find her and goes to the school thinking that maybe she is there, and to his surprise, he runs into Aki, who had the same idea. He is surprised that she is so committed to finding Nico when she doesn't even like her, but Aki says that she feels bad for Nico because it sucks to be rejected by the boy she likes. This confuses Masamune even more since she rejected him and gave him a horrible nickname, and currently, she continues to break the hearts of the boys who confess their feelings to her. He then decides to ask her if she remembers the nickname Pig's Foot, but she doesn't seem to understand what he's referring to. Suddenly, many paper planes begin to fall from the school roof and Masamun realizes that it is Nico, since she was reading his favorite manga and there is a scene where the protagonist is rejected and makes paper airplanes with the love letters that she was never able to send. Masamun runs up to the roof and finds Nico with many letters that say I love you. She tells him that she knew he would find her and in his arms. After that, Nico is taken to the hospital and the guilt consumes Masamun since he rejected her. Without thinking about her feelings, he was only thinking about his revenge. Afterwards, Shidu tells everyone that Nico is stable and wants to talk to Aki alone. Then Aki tells Masamun that Nico is waiting for him and Nico finally tells him the truth. It turns out that she is very sick and has to have surgery abroad at her grandfather's request. But she asks him for time telling him that she wanted to fall in love first, so she chose a photo at random from a bunch of candidates and that photo turned out to be Masamune's, although he does not remember having a photo with her. He can't believe that this is all due to a random choice, and she tells him that although she didn't manage to have a relationship with him since everything was based on lies, he gave her an experience of broken heart. Then she tells him that lies are always discovered and thanks him for all the lovely memories they had, and she says goodbye to him, since she will surely have to go away soon. Meanwhile, outside Neko's room, Futaba confesses to Yoshino that she also likes Masamune, but she knows that he likes Aki. After that, Masamune leaves Nico's room and ignoring everyone. 
On the other hand, Shiyu asks Nico if it's okay letting Masamune go, and she says that it is the right thing to do and hugs a photo of him and her when they were children. It turns out that they met at a party and both families took a photo, although he doesn't remember. At night, Aki can't stop thinking about Nico. She assured him that she was totally rejected by Masamune and she should accept his love. Although when thinking about love, Aki can't help but remember her friend from the past. He was plump and cute. She loved him so much that she blushes just thinking about him. Meanwhile, Masamune decides to leave home and tells his mother and sister that he should go gain new muscles and reformulate a plan he has. Back at Aki's house, she hears someone behind her and is surprised to see her friend Masamune. And although he is still plump, she blushes in tears when she sees him. The boy greets her saying that he hasn't seen her in a long time and asks her to talk to the head of the family, but is greeted by Aki's father's assistant. He introduces himself as Kenetsugu Gasu and gives him a letter, which has written a promise from both families. This promise consists of marrying Aki and Kenetsugu. Meanwhile, on a distant mountain, Masamu trains relentlessly. Some time later, the second term begins and the students meet again, and as soon as Aki arrives at school, a boy asks her on a date and she rejects him, earning admiration from her admirers, Kikyu and Murray and Kaneko. But that's about to change since she arrived accompanied by Kanetsugu, and Aki's fans don't understand why she treats him kindly, and they are shocked when Aki mentions taking him to her private island someday. On the other hand, Masamune arrives more toned than before and meets Nico at school. She says that she already had the surgery and now she is fine. After that, he goes to look for Aki to give her a gift from the countryside, but is left speechless when he sees her talking to a chubby boy. And to make matters worse, the boy says that his nickname is Masamune, but he can call him Kanetsugu. And not only that, Kansugu reveals that he and Aki are engaged. Then Masamune runs to talk to Yoshino and she tells him that she tried to call him several times but he had no reception on the mountain. Then she informs him that she verified the letter with calligraphic tests and the letter is real. And the worst thing is that Aki took it well. She acts as if she is in love with the chubby Masamune. During the day, Masamune observes Kanetsugu and realizes that he is intelligent, kind, gets along well with boys and girls, and easily makes Aki blush, something he has not been able to achieve with his muscular body. Masamune doesn't understand how Aki gets along with Kanetsugu when she gave him hell for being chubby when he was a child, so Yoshino apologizes, although he doesn't understand why. On the other hand, Aki's fans gather to talk about Aki's strange behavior. She used to hate boys, but now she is stuck with Kanetsugu. Then, Kanetsugu joins their conversation and confesses that he is engaged to Aki. But for him, she is a goddess and he does not intend to touch her or kiss her. And that calms the girls, who decide to protect Aki and Kanetsugu. The next day, Masamune is distracted thinking about how to get to talk to Aki, which earns him a scolding from Futaba, who reminds him that they are choosing what to present at the school festival. He says that he agrees to everything, without knowing that he agreed to be the prince of the play where Kojiro will be Snow White, since he is prettier than the girls in the class. Later, he tries to talk to Aki, but she easily gets rid of him and leaves with Kanetsuhu. All this is observed by Aki's admirers who want to get rid of Masamune since his goddess of Aki will be safer with Kanetsugu. The next day, the student council receives the proposals from the second year students and notices that class A and class B have proposed doing the Snow White play, and since there cannot be two plays with the same theme, one of the classes must change the proposal. But both representatives refuse to change since in class A, Aki and Kenetsugu are the leads, while the class chose Masamune and Kojiro. Then Masamune intervenes and says that both classes should present Snow White and then put it to a vote, and whoever wins will choose who to dance with at the after party, and Kanetsugu accepts. The days go by and Futaba becomes more and more irritable with Kojiro since he doesn't know how to act like a girl and the play is tomorrow. Tired of so many scoldings, Kojiro runs away and Masamune goes after him but runs into Kanetsugu. He makes fun of Masamune saying that he doesn't know how to treat girls unlike him who treats Aki so well that she's falling in love with him more and more. For example, he gives her chocolates every break. Masamune doesn't know what to say since it seems like he's getting advice from a girl. At the end of the day, Aki and Kanetsugu walk home together and he tells her that he ran into Masamune but that puts her in a bad mood and he apologizes, which warms her heart and she says smiling that he has always been kind. That makes Kanetsugu feel guilty, since he knows she doesn't talk about him because he's not the chubby friend Aki remembers. In reality, Kanetsugu comes from a very family and a year ago, one day he ran into Yusuaki, who mistook him for Masamune and it occurred to him to usurp Masamune's identity to improve the living conditions of his family. The only problem is that the real Masamune is getting in the way of his plans. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Masamun won't stop sneezing and says that someone is talking about him, but Chainatsu thinks he has a cold and tells it to their mom, who comes running to take care of him. The next day, Masamun can't stop sneezing because last night he climbed on the roof with little clothes to show his mom that he was the epitome of health, but it was pretty chilly outside and he now feels bad. Fortunately for him, Nico realizes that he has a fever and takes him to the infirmary to rest, since the Battle of the Snow White will soon begin and she tells him that it doesn't matter if he does it wrong, since she will be his dance partner at the after party. 
After covering him with a blanket, she goes to buy tea for both of them, and she doesn't realize that she was being watched by Kakun. On the other hand, Kanetsugu enters the girl's changing room to put on his clothes and later realizes that he made a mistake, and allows himself to be guided by one of the witches from the play to another place. Meanwhile, Niko buys drinks for her and Masamu and runs into Kojiro, who now has a crush on her. He tries to act manly but soon gives up on and accompanies her to the infirmary to check on Masamu. The problem is that he has disappeared and they run to tell Futaba. What they don't know is that him was by Kikun, who tells Masamun that she plans to keep him there until the festival is over and Aki and Kanetsugu dance at the bonfire. But that won't happen either, since Kanetsugu is also lost and Merig is frustrated because she thinks that Class B thought the same as her and their prince. Aki is sad to find out that Kanetsugu does not appear and she thinks that he has left her for the second time before an important moment like many years ago. Although no one suspects that the keeper was Yoshino, she guided Kanetsugu to a storage room and locked him there. Meanwhile, Kikun tells Masamun how she met Aki. She was once defeated by a guy who cheated, but when he went to declare his love for Aki, she rejected him by calling him a coward, and from that moment on, Kikun admires Aki, a girl who can defeat someone with a single word. Then Masamun tells her that she is also cheating by keeping him locked up there, and she agrees with him, so she unties him. Suddenly, Kikun receives a call from Mary. She wants to talk to Masamun and tells him that she proposes a tie between both plays on the condition that Masamun releases Kanetsugu. Quickly, Masamun realizes that Yoshino Kanetsugu and tells Mary that he does not accept the tie because the class of play is about to start, while the class B play will start in the afternoon. He has a lot of time and he is sure that his friends will find him and he cuts off the call, which greatly frustrates Mary. Then Aki talks to Mary and tells her that she will do the play alone, since she has never needed a prince. On the other hand, Masamun manages to escape from Kikum and tells his friends that they are about to win the battle of plays because Kanetsugu is lost, but Kojiro tells him that the class of play has already started and Masamun runs to the theater. Masamun enters the theater and is mesmerized by the play of Class A. Its stage and costumes are better than those of his class. Even Aki's performance is impeccable. And he tells Niko that they can't win, so he wants to ask Yoshino to free Kanetsugu, but she is one of the seven dwarfs and she is on stage. That Mary blames everything on Masamun and tells him that Aki carried the play alone on her shoulder even though she knows that her prince will not arrive. Masamun feels worse both physically and mentally, but he has an idea to help Aki and asks Niko for a favor. On the other hand, the play continues and Eki gives her all, until the scene where she falls asleep in the coffin holding some flowers. And remember how one time she found a bouquet of flowers in her house and she waited all day for her friend Masamune, but he never came and she thinks that this time the same thing will happen and the play will end like this. Suddenly, Masamune appears wearing his prince's suit ready to save the play of Class A, although he is very weak due to fever. Fortunately, the dwarves understand that he is very sick and cover his lines, and in the end, Yoshino gives him the final push so that he reaches Aki who does not understand why Masamune does not come to give her the fake kiss and thus finish the play once and for all. What she didn't expect was to receive a real kiss from him, and she was so surprised that she punched him, making him f The room is speechless, but Niko, Kojiro, and Futaba begin to applaud, and soon the audience follows them, and the play finally ends. The next day, Kaneko brings together Class A and Class B to celebrate Class A's victory, since Class B had to cancel their play after Masamune did and spent the day in the infirmary. Even so, he and Aki won the awards for Best Heroes of the Festival. Then Kaneko says that everyone should have a karaoke competition as an after-party, and everyone except. They all sing very well, but Masamune excuses himself every time it is his turn, until he can't pass it anymore, and everyone asks him to sing the last song. But when he finishes singing, he notices that everyone is after hearing his faithful song. After that, everyone flees the karaoke room, and Masamune stays with Aki, while she waits for Yoshino to bring her food. He says that he won't leave her alone because he wants to make sure she is safe and reminds her that she never thanked him for saving her from Tanabe. She realizes that he is right, and she shyly says that he can ask her for whatever he wants in gratitude, and Masamune asks her for a kiss. Aki accepts and asks him to close his eyes, but instead of a kiss, he receives a roasted sweet potato. When Aki leaves, Yoshino scolds him for being so slow with his revenge and tells him that he is very close to achieving it. This emboldens Masamune, willing to do anything to make Aki fall in love with him and then reject her, just as she did so many years ago. Sees on two, some time later, Aki and her friends go on vacation to France, where Masamune plans to advance his revenge against Aki, although Kanatsugu is a thorn in his side. While they visit tourist places in France, Masamune collides with a French girl. She is Muriel, and she's an otaku who wants to be a manga artist and is delighted to have run into a Japanese high school boy. She asks him to be her model, and she starts asking him all kinds of stereotypical Japanese questions, but he rejects her proposal saying that he is on vacation with his friends and he will use his free time to spend it with Aki. That makes Muriel very sad, so her older brother, Frank, sent his men to f Masamune so he and Aki must show Muriel the essence of rom-coms or they will regret it. 
Later, Masamun tells Yoshino what happened and she promises to help him. The next day, Kanetsu starts his day in a bad mood because his roommate rushed him out of the bathroom while he was still covering his with bandages, hiding his big secret. Bandaging himself up all the time is a hassle, but you must do it to get money. On the other hand, Aki and Masamun meet Muriel in front of the Eiffel Tower and she shows them her manga, but Masamun tells her that it is poorly done because in her manga, the protagonists confess their feelings to each other very quickly, when it should not happen that way. He's a fan of reading rom-com manga and says that the protagonists should tease each other for almost the entire story and only be together at the end. Muriel doesn't like that and she says that the French are honest with their feelings and she tries to kiss him. Luckily, Aki stops her and tells her that the Japanese aren't like that, it's not easy for them to talk about their feelings and Masamun adds that sometimes there is something from their pasts holding them back. That piques Muriel's curiosity and she asks them if that happens to them, but they both quickly deny it. Then Muriel asks them to show her what makes a real Japanese manga rom-com couple. Meanwhile, in a French cafe, Kojiro, Nico, and Futaba spend time together and the redhead asks Nico if she still likes Masamun, which surprises Kojiro, since he still has a crush on her. Nico says that she feels pathetic for feeling this way since Masamun rejected her a long time ago, but she still waits for him because she knows that he will soon suffer a lot. On the other hand, Yoshino takes Kanetsu somewhere else with the excuse that Aki is waiting for him. But in reality, she just wants to distract him so that Masamun and Aki can spend time together. Tired of following her without reaching their destination, Kanetsu demands that she tell him the truth and Yoshino invents that she just wanted to spend time with him. But he tells her that he knows it's a lie and shows her a photo of her and Masamun being a team. Yoshino stops pretending and tells him that he can tell Aki, but Kanetsu smiles evilly and says that he will tell her parents that they will be very disappointed that their daughter is betraying Aki, whom they swore to serve. Yoshino says that he is not worthy of Aki, so she is only protecting Aki's interests, but suddenly, she remembers that she once acted selfishly and hurt Aki, so she stays silent. Before leaving, Kanetsugu tells Yoshino that he already told her parents and advises her to stay low on this trip. On the other hand, Aki and Masamun don't know how to show Muriel what a Japanese rom-com's couple looks like, so they opt for something simple, walking holding hands. They can almost pretend that they are just another couple, but Muriel walks behind them reciting the dialogue that she would put in this scene. After walking for a while, Aki gets hungry and Masamun runs to buy her lots of sandwiches, but before she starts eating, he warns Aki that Muriel is still watching them. So he has the idea of feeding each other, but Aki is so nervous that she can barely offer him the sandwich. Suddenly, a dog approaches them and Aki happily pets it, to which Masamun says that she always loved dogs, which surprises her. Then she decides to tell him the story of her and her childhood best friend. It turns out that eight years ago, Aki felt very lonely, Yoshino was sick and couldn't play with her, while her parents never stopped arguing. Until one day, a chubby boy appeared at the gate of her mansion who was being chased by his and she saved him by setting the dogs on those children. The next day, that boy came to visit her and gave her a box of chocolates as a gift, but she rejected them because she was tired of the gifts her parents gave her to try to please her. That made her friend very sad and Aki, seeing that he was very sensitive, decided to toughen him up so he could confront his The days and weeks passed and her friendship grew stronger, until one day, Aki decided that he was ready to face his and met them one afternoon in the park. With Aki's help, the chubby boy got revenge on his and he thanked her profusely, but instead, she smiled through tears, saying that her parents were going to divorce. Then her friend promised her that he would always be by her side to make her happy, and without her realizing it, Aki had fallen in love with him. Masamun listens to the story in surprise, since he remembers it very differently, so he asks her what happened next. But Aki sadly tells him that the boy never showed up again, until he returned recently. That boy was Kanetsugu, but his nickname used to be Masamun. This shocks the real Masamun as he doesn't understand why Aki thinks that the boy was Kanetsugu, but soon anger fills him because her story is distorted and the last part of it is missing. One day, Masamun went to bring flowers to Aki, but he was attacked by his and when he asked Aki for help, she behind the window told him that she would never fall in love with the pig's foot like him. Heartbroken, Masamun fled the mansion, leaving behind the trampled flowers. Masamun returns to the present and angrily asks Aki to stop pretending to be the dramatic heroine of the sad story. She deserves everything bad that has happened to her. That shocks her, and she runs away in tears. Muriel asks them not to fight, but she soon shuts up seeing them as a heartbroken couple, and she decides to draw a manga with a happy ending. On the other hand, Yoshino reads her parents' disappointed messages and scolds herself for hurting Aki eight years ago. Suddenly, Aki appears and hugs her tightly, crying. Back in Japan, Yoshino complies as always by buying Aki sandwiches and also tells Masamun that she won't be able to help him much from now on. Then he tells her that Aki made up a new story about their childhood and Yoshino only tells him that Aki was having a hard time back then, so maybe she made up new memories, but that doesn't convince Masamun. On the other hand, Kanatsugu has financial problems and asks his debtors to wait a little longer. 
After that, he goes with Aki to spend time with her and accelerate his courtship plan. So she, her admirers, and him go to a coffee shop. Meanwhile, Masamune and Nico are walking home and she asks him if he is continuing with his revenge plan and he says yes, so she hugs him and says that revenge is not love. So if he only feels resentment and desires revenge for Aki, the two of them can fall in love and it won't be considered cheating. But he doesn't pay attention to her because out of the corner of his eyes he sees Frank's men spying on him, so he takes Nico's hand and run away. But it's too late, Frank and his men corner them and he tells Masamune that he brought him Muriel's new manuscript, she spent days without eating or sleeping drawing it. Later, Masamun reads the manuscript and is surprised to see the story of him and Aki, starting from when they were children until when they meet again as teenagers, instantly recognizing each other and being together in the end. Muriel also sent him a letter where she says that she preferred to give them a happy ending and drew the story from another perspective, implying that both stories can be true depending on who experiences it. On the other hand, Kanatsugu shows Aki's friends the photos he took of her in France, although he doesn't have any with her because Aki only spent time with Masamun. That comment angers Aki, and she runs away to the bathroom. The girls get angry at Kanetsugu, but he tells them that Aki is sad and irritable because Yoshino and Masamun are together, and that hurt her. Everything is a lie from Kanetsugu, since he must hurry up with the plan to marry Aki, because his sister Sumire is very sick, and he needs a lot of money to keep her in the luxury hospital that their family chose for her. Kanetsugu knows that he is usurping a place that does not belong to him, but since he found the old engagement contract of the two families, he finally saw a light of hope for Sumire. At night, Masamun goes to Aki's mansion and asks Yoshino to talk. He tells her that he doesn't believe that Aki made up an unreal story, but rather that she lived it in a different way, but that doesn't explain how their friendship ended. Yoshino realizes what he is about to say and her guilt consumes her, as he has finally realized the truth. Masamun tells her that he has remembered that Aki told him about another girl in the house, but he never saw her because that girl was sick, and that memory has cleared his mind. The night he went to see Aki for the last time, she called him Pig's Foot, but currently, Aki doesn't know that nickname, and the only ones who know about it are him, his and the person who gave it to him, that is Yoshino. Meanwhile, in the cafeteria, Kanetsugu and the girls plan to separate Masamun from Aki, and to achieve this, they must first separate Yoshino and Aki, and since the girls think that Yoshino has betrayed Aki's trust by being with Masamun, they decide to help Kanetsugu. After that, he and Aki walk home and he tells her that they can spend time at the amusement park, since she wants to go. On the other hand, at Aki's mansion, Yoshino confesses to Masamun that she was the one who gave him the nickname Pig's Foot. It turns out that Yoshino has held a grudge against him for a long time. Eight years ago, she got chicken pox and was confined to her room so as not to infect Aki. For her, that was comforting. Since she was born, she was entrusted to serve Aki, and sometimes she was in a bad mood and Yoshino had to put up with her because they would always be united. The days passed and she recovered and thought that Aki had missed her. But instead, Aki had found a chubby friend and he made her happy because it was obvious that he liked her. The weeks passed and Yoshino began to resent Masamune more and more because she always obeyed Aki, but Aki only wanted to spend time with him. Time after, when Aki got chicken pox, she was confined to her room and crying told Yoshino that from now on she would not be alone because her friend Masamune promised to be with her always and that broke Aki's heart. So little Yoshino didn't think twice and put on Aki's wig and clothes to pretend to be her and get rid of Masamune, and she succeeded, but that didn't do Aki any good. She cried for days waiting for Masamune to come back, and in the end she ended up hating all the boys. Guilt consumed Yoshino, until one day, Masamune appeared, more handsome and skinny, and although Aki did not recognize him, Yoshino did. Masamune listens to the whole story dismayed and white as a sheep and does not understand why she helped him with his revenge. But Yoshino smilingly tells him that he would never fulfill his revenge plan because he would see how Aki really is. So now she asks him to save Aki from Kanetsugu. They are now on a date, and he is lying to her by pretending to be the real Masamune to take advantage of her. And Yoshino can't do anything because her parents won't stop watching her. So she asks him to go to Aki. Masamune screams in frustration and leaves the manor, insulting himself and Yoshino for everything that is happening. When he arrives at the amusement park, he runs into Aki's friends and asks them where she and Kanetsugu are, but they don't want to tell him and accuse him of being a cheater by showing him the photo of him with Yoshino. But Masamune doesn't care about that and tells them that they must save Aki from Kanetsugu's lies and that surprises them. Meanwhile, Kanetsugu and Eki's date is going wonderfully. She's having a good time, but Kanetsugu bitterly thinks about how to get her to agree to unite the two families with their future marriage and thus get money for Sumir. Then, while they are eating ice cream, he tells her that his sister Sumire is very sick and that worries Aki, so she tells him that he can ask her anything and she will help him. But before he can ask for money, Masamune appears and punches him and complains about using his name. Then he tells Aki that if she plans to date her childhood friend, she should date him and not the fake Masamune. 
Kanetsuku gets angry and yells at Masamune that he only wants to hurt Aki because she hurt his ego as a popular boy. But Masamune tells him that that is not true. He used to be a chubby boy who lived being by the neighborhood kids until a girl saved him, Aki. This shocks Aki, and she realizes that the real Masamune is the thin boy since Kanetsuku off and reveals a feminine. Kanetsuku blushes, realizing that they now know she's a girl and runs away. Masamune then tells Aki that she is oblivious for not recognizing him before, but she instead wants to talk about his request. Masamune doesn't understand what she's talking about, and after a few minutes he remembers that he asked Aki out, and she surprisingly accepts, which disconcerts Masamune, and not only that, she tells him that she has the upper hand because he asked for it first. On the other hand, Kanetsubu goes to the hospital to visit her sister Sumer, and she worries when she sees the bump on her cheek and she says that it was done by a horrible boy, but she is relieved that everyone knows the truth now. Days later, the rumor that Aki and Masamune are a couple spreads quickly through the school, which makes the girls try to ask Masamune on a date, so he politely rejects them. Another girl who feels rejected is Miko, since she wanted to go out with Masamune because he only wanted to be with Aki for his revenge, and he apologizes to her for not even thinking about her. Later in class, Masamune receives a text from Aki. She demands that he buy her a lot of her favorite sandwich for lunch. So he goes to buy them but runs into Kanetsugu working in the school cafeteria, and she takes him aside to tell him a little about her story. It turns out that she was not coming to school these days, because she decided to fix the family's financial situation by selling the family manor to pay all her debts. Then the school offered her a job to help her in any way they could, and even though her whole plan went wrong, Kanetsugu is relieved to stop pretending to be a boy and jokes to Masamune that they should get married because he punched her. He's rich and has good grades that scares Masamune, but she laughs, clarifying that it's a joke. After that, Masamune goes to the gym storage room and finds Aki trying to move a stove, since the days have been colder lately. He gives her the sandwiches and she gives him fried bread and dangerous to eat since she sees him very skinny and the old Masamune was round her. And Masamune almost goes out of his way to say that he became skinnier to get revenge on her, and that's something he can't say. Then Aki asks Masamune if he wants to go have ice cream with her, but he quickly denies and he gets so close to her that they both blush. Suddenly, Yoshino enters with a can of kerosene for the stove, so Masamune and Aki separate, and he runs away. Later, Masamune and Yoshino meet in the park and he tells her that he still needs help with Aki because being in a relationship is very complicated. Yoshino tells him that Aki's birthday is on Christmas Eve and she would surely like to spend it with him. And that seems like a good idea to Masamune, but she tells him that this is the last time they will meet like this. The next day, Masamune tells Aki that he would like to spend her birthday with her and she reminds him that her birthday is on Christmas Eve. So the next few days, Aki tries on various outfits for her first date with Masamune while he asks Kojiro and Chinatsu for advice on where to take Aki. But his friend only recommends cafes and restaurants and his sister tells him that he should rent a castle and dance with her. Those options do not convince Masamune, so he decides to read his favorite romance manga to get ideas for a good Christmas date, but things always happen in mangas that make it difficult for couples at Christmas. Days later, it's Christmas Eve and Aki and Masamune meet for their date. She has a new hairstyle and he nervously tells her that they are going to see a movie, and this time it's not about zombies. They enter the movie theater and Masamune is surprised when Aki sits next to him and she says that there is no point in being apart when they are already dating, which makes them blush. The problem is that the movie is very sad. So Aki ends up crying and once she calms down, Masamune takes her to the cafe where he made a reservation for the two of them. But when they arrive, they see a burned building. It turns out that the building caught fire this morning and Masamune can't stop thinking that he's inside a manga. So they try to go to other coffee shops, but none of them have room for them because the Christmas season is when couples go on dates the most. Aki tells him that they can give up and end the date, but he gets frustrated because he prepared for a long time for this date. And at that moment, he gets the idea to take her to his house. There they will have a good time and her kind mother will serve Aki tons of food. But when they arrive, they find the house empty and a note that says that his mother won a trip to the hot springs in the lottery, so she and Shainatsu left while his father is on a business trip. Masamune tries to explain to her that this was not planned but she doesn't completely believe him, although she pretends that she is mature about it and orders him to give her some tea. The problem is that the house is full of snacks and he can't find the tea bags until Aki offers to look for them, but instead she finds flour for pancakes, and they decide to make some. They have a great time making fun of each other while trying to flip the pancakes. After that, they sit down to eat them a cocoa, and she adds honey and chocolate to Masamune's pancakes because he was eating them without sugar. That baffles Masamune, and he takes her to his room to show her what his life is like. Aki is surprised to see all the exercise equipment in his room, and she almost tears up with happiness when she sees the photo of the two of them as children taped to his whiteboard. Then he tells her that he didn't like himself the way he was as a child, and it bothers him when someone tries to feed him fatty things because they make him feel like he's not worthy now. 
Suddenly, they stumble and Masamun falls on top of Aki. But the romantic moment is cut short when Masamun runs to the bathroom with a stomach ache. He thinks some of his mom's ingredients were rotten again. But he sees his arm with rashes and thinks maybe he can't touch Aki. So he decides to send Aki a message from the bathroom telling her that he can't get off and that there is a gift for her in his coat pocket. She gets angry but tells him that everything is fine. Arriving at her house, Aki sadly asks Yoshino if she has no appeal as a woman and Yoshino assures her that she does, expecting that the date ended badly. Aki goes up to her room and opens Masamune's gift, a beautiful pendant of two Doberman dogs, just like the dogs she used to have when she was a child, but those beautiful memories are overshadowed by dark thoughts since she saw in the diary of Masamune that he plans to take revenge on a girl. Days later, Masamune goes to the doctor and he tells him that maybe he gets hives because he is stressed, although Masamune keeps thinking that it is because he is too close to Aki. After that, he meets Kojiro and Futaba who were at a cafe. They tell him that they plan to go to the shrine for the new year and invite him and Aki, but he says that maybe Aki is busy. Then Futaba proposes also inviting Miko, who was at the family state spending time with her entire family. She quickly agrees as memories of her and Masamune flood her with tenderness as she sees photos of the two of them. The four friends meet at the shrine where they draw their luck and play typical New Year's games. Masamune can't stop laughing thanks to his friends and at the end of the day, he realizes that the hives are gone. Days later, classes start again but Yoshino completely ignores Masamune, something that seems strange to Neko. In the afternoon, Masamune goes to get the results of his medical tests and meets Niko, who also had a medical checkup. She gets worried when she sees him in the hospital and invites him to her house for tea. He tells her that due to his stress, he has been getting a rash on his arm and he doesn't understand why since he was more stressed when he was focused on his revenge plan. Then Niko tells him that he has burnout syndrome before revenge was what made him continue, but now that goal is gone, and although he is dating Aki, he is not happy because he is not in love with her. That shocks Masami and Niko continues to prove her point by saying that she met him long before Aki, and although he doesn't remember her, she fell in love with him before and tried to force a relationship based on those feelings, but nothing has happened to her because she is in love with him now too. And to prove it, she tries to kiss Masamu, but luckily for him, Shidu intervenes and stops the kiss, but to Niko's surprise and dismay, she realizes that hives have grown on her hand and tries to hide it. Before Masamu leaves, Niko advises him to be honest and accept his feelings, and that is something that Masamu cannot do because he does not even understand himself. In the streets, he screams in frustration, which scares Yoshino, who is passing by and tripped. He goes down to help her and is surprised to see her shopping bag for the first time. The bag does not have sandwiches, but a box of grape juice. Meanwhile, Aki is hungry again and orders Yoshino to bring her a snack, but her faithful servant is not there and she starts looking for her in the house until she finds Yoshino's sister who tells her that she sent Yoshino to buy some things and told her to buy something for herself, otherwise she would never find out what she likes. So Aki decides to go on her own to meet her friends. Back to Yoshino and Masamun, she has twisted her ankle and can't walk, so Masamun tries to carry her in his arms to the mansion, but she almost knocks him out for touching her, and tells him that she will only let herself be carried if he carries her on his back, which is a little uncomfortable for Masamun, and for her too, since she is wearing a and everyone is looking at them. Then, Yoshino asks him to take her to a bench in the park, and he runs there so that no one sees Yoshino's legs. On the other hand, in the cafeteria, Aki's friends debate how to ask her about her relationship with Masamun, since it is something that is still very difficult for them to accept. When Aki arrives, she apologizes for always missing their meetings, and while she eats a large amount of desserts, the girls work up the courage to ask her about him. To the girl's surprise, Aki blushes and confirms her relationship with Masamun, and instead of getting angry, her friends are enchanted by Aki's loving face. Meanwhile, in the park, Masamune and Yoshino have a serious talk. She accuses him of not having made a move on Aki, and he doesn't stop watching her carefully until he notices something about her and hugs her. Then he rolls up the sleeve of his coat and sees that there are no hives on his arm and concludes that he had more fun planning things out with Yoshino than hanging out with Aki. This angers Yoshino, and she butts him in the leaving him unconscious. When Masamune wakes up, he sees that she left a message on his face, telling him to never say that again. Masamune agrees with that since he is unintentionally hurting Aki and Yoshino. Later, Aki runs into Kanetsugu, who asks to talk to her over coffee. She sincerely apologizes to Aki, and tells her that she did everything for her sister Sumer, and Aki tells her that there is nothing to forgive because she understands perfectly that she was in a desperate situation and does not feel hurt. Instead, she feels sad because it seems like all this time, she was hurting someone without realizing it. Seeing her almost crying, Kanetsugu assumes that Aki is talking about Masamune and advises her to be honest with her feelings. Only that way she would feel relieved. Upon arriving home, Aki finds Yoshino with the first aid box and runs to help her. And although Yoshino says that she is fine, Aki helps her anyway because that is the right thing to do. But that only increases Yoshino's guilt since she is starting to have feelings for Masamune, and that is a bigger betrayal than before to Aki. 
At night, Masamune wakes up sweating and scared from a dream with Yoshino in the dream. She smiled at him saying that they should enter the school holding hands and he refused. Masamune concludes that some feelings should never be revealed. Days later, the Valentine's chocolate fever floods the school. Futaba and her friends have decided to make mandatory chocolates for the entire classroom, while Kojiro wants to make some for Mako. On the other hand, Aki also wants to make chocolates for Masamune and Yoshino offers to teach her. But as the days go by, Aki can't make them, so they opt for making chocolate-covered cookies. When Valentine's Day finally arrives, Futaba and her friends make all the boys in the classroom happy by giving them chocolates. Outside, Kojiro gives Niko the chocolate he made for her, and this is seen by Aki, who says that they seem very close and Niko notices that Aki has a gift bag. In the schoolyard, Aki tries to give her gift to Masamune, but she keeps glaring at the bags full of chocolates that other girls gave to Masamune, but he tells her that he is not going to eat them and will only receive what she gives him. That makes her blush and she gives him her gift, and even though Masamune is very careful about what he eats, he decides to eat the chocolate cookies that Aki worked so hard to bake for him. In the afternoon, they get together to have a Valentine's date, and to Aki's surprise, he says that they will walk around and eat lots of delicious things. For the first time in a long time, Masamune enjoys eating without thinking about calories, but he eats so much that he gets his stomach ache. He apologizes to Aki, and tells her that they can repeat the date later since he had a great time as she, smiling, tells him that she had a lot of fun. On the other hand, Masamune's new carefree behavior is noticed by his mother and sister, they think it is thanks to his girlfriend. The days go by and Masamune and Aki continue spending time together. They even lock themselves in the gym storage room to have lunch without Yoshino. Although he still has hives, so he tries not to touch Aki, but he still enjoys spending time with her. One day, Niko finds Yoshino having lunch alone and sits down to talk to her saying that it is very strange to see her without Aki and Yoshino only says that she wants Aki to be happy and in a mocking tone, Niko says that she wants Masamune and Aki to be happy. That day, Niko runs into Masamune and asks him about his hives, and he says that no one has died from having hives, so he doesn't care about having them, which annoys Niko. Then, when everyone has left school, Niko asks Aki to talk alone and asks her to break up with Masamune, but Aki fervently refuses. So Niko tells her that Masamune doesn't love her, he's only with her because he loved her in the past, and to Niko's surprise, Aki crying says that she already knows. She read Masamune's entire agenda and knows that he planned to make her fall in love with him for revenge and at night finally all of Masamune's actions made sense to her, the reasons why he was always attentive or affectionate with her, and why he panicked when she didn't pay attention to him, it was all lies but now she is in love with him and does not plan to free him. For Aki, she and Miko are alike, both in one way love with the same boy. When Aki leaves, she finds Kojiro outside, he had heard the entire conversation. After that, Aki meets Yoshino at the school gates and tells her what Niko told her, and that angers Yoshino so much that she tells her the truth of what happened eight years ago. She finally confesses that it was her fault that Masamune disappeared, and although Masamune's plan was to get revenge on her, her feelings for Aki never changed. Aki listens to her carefully and just thanks her for working so hard all this time. Meanwhile, inside the school, Kojiro asks Niko why she did that, and she says that she doesn't mind being the villain as long as Masamune is happy. The next day, the snow that has fallen all night is accumulated and Chinatsu asks her brother to go down with her to make snowmen, and he accepts because he does not want to be called Grandpa. After playing in the snow, Chinatsu says that she wants to meet his girlfriend since he is in a good mood these days thanks to her and he says that he will introduce Aki to her one day. Later at school, the boys regret eating the obligatory chocolates that the girls gave them because now they must return the favor on white day. On the other hand, Niko is a little surprised and relieved to see that Masamune and Aki are still together but she still feels guilty and tells Kojiro that he can treat her harsher since she knows that what she did was mean, but Kojiro says that he appreciates that she is very direct, and that is a quality. The days go by and Aki and Masamune continue eating together in the gym storage room, and he tries to ask her to go to his house to meet his family, but he regrets it at the last minute. One night, Yoshino brings some papers to Aki and asks her how things are going with Masamune, and Aki smiles sweetly saying that now that she knows the truth, she finally believes in Masamune's feelings. After that, she calls Masamune and tells him that she wants to go on a date with him on White Day and he quickly accepts, although he starts to panic because he doesn't know what to give her as a gift. Then he asks his mother and sister for advice on what to give Aki. Shinatsu suggests buying her a ring, and his mom says that he could bake her something since Aki made him homemade cookies. Masamune agrees with his mom and decides to make macarons, but all of his attempts fail, so he decides to buy them for her instead of making them. The next day, he asks Kojiro for a place that sells the best macarons in the city, and his friend takes him to the perfect place. But there, Masamune sees a chocolate in the shape of a white rabbit, which looks a lot like Aki, and he decides to buy it for her as a gift. The next day, Masamune goes to the convention store where Aki summoned him. He thinks he is in the wrong place, but Aki was waiting for him inside. She takes him to talk to an employee, and she says that he used to be one of the boys who b****ed him, which surprises Masamune, and the boy, embarrassed by his past, apologizes to Masamune. 
After that, Aki tells Masamune that she has all the other boys' addresses and they can go see them right now, but Masamune doesn't want to. Then she asks him if he felt afraid when he saw his former and Masamune responds that he felt nothing. He always thought that he would tremble if he saw them again, but he didn't, and that makes him cry with relief. She comforts him saying that he is stronger now and he gives her his white day gift and wishes with all his heart that he could f*** her. But Aki walks away from him and returns him the gift, saying goodbye to him. Four days later, Masamune still does not go to school, which worries his friends, so they go looking for Aki and ask about him. But she coldly tells them that she knows nothing about him because they already broke up. This surprises Yoshino so much that she decides to go to Masamune's house to fix things, since all this is a mistake and Masamune's friends decide to go too. But when they arrive, they see that all the lights are off and they are greeted by a hungry Chinatsu. She tells them that Masamune went to their grandfather's house, who lives in a city far away. And that made their mom so sad that she can't stop crying in Masamune's bed. They used to be used to Masamune leaving and coming back, but lately he was spending more time with the family and now he has broken his mother's heart. Before leaving, Shinatsu tells them that she will let them know if Masamune returns, since they can only wait. On the way home, Yoshino finally breaks and accuses Miko of being the culprit. She planted absurd ideas on Aki, and she is sure that she did the same with Masamune. That breaks Niko too, who cannot bear the truth and slaps Yoshino in the face, telling her that she is also to blame. For wanting to protect her heart, she sent Aki to catch Masamu and he had no feelings for her. Yoshino says that her own feelings don't matter and that only makes Niko cry more, since she feels very alone in all of this. Suddenly, Aki appears and asks them to stop screaming because they are bothering the neighbors. She asks Futaba to take Niko to her house and asks Yoshino to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Aki says that the first thing they should do is speak as equals, not as master and servant, and Yoshino says that that is difficult because she has always served her. But Aki reminds her that they have done many things together as friends, so as a friend she asks her to stop ignoring her true feelings and go find Masamune. Yoshino starts to cry since she keeps thinking that she is betraying her, but she decides to listen to Aki. On the other hand, in a very faraway place, Masamune sweeps the leaves of his grandfather's house and remembers how he used to do it when he was a child, but now he is different because he has no one to hate. At that moment, his grandfather approaches him and tells him that he must burn the snacks he brought because they are prohibited for him, and he obeys him. Meanwhile, in a karaoke room, Futaba tells Nico that the best way to heal a broken heart is to sing and open our eyes to look around us. And since Nico doesn't understand what she means, Futaba tells her that she should pay attention to Kojiro. For Nico, it's too soon, but she thanks her for her advice and Futaba reminds her that she is not alone. That night, Yoshino takes a train to the prefecture where Masamune's grandfather lives. In the morning, Masamune stacks the firewood that he chopped and remembers how he used to run in the mornings when he was a child thinking about his revenge and wants to tell that little boy that in the future there are no more enemies and everything was a misunderstood. Suddenly, he hears leaves rustling and is surprised to see Yoshino appear out of nowhere. When she sees him, she begins to tear up and kisses him, shocking Masamune. Weeks later, Aki tries to be more independent since Yoshino is now dating Masamune and spends less time with her, but she still can't help but feel heartbroken. Spring arrives and classes start again, now they are third-year students, and to Aki's bad luck, she and Masmon have to be classmates. She tries to distance herself with him, but he continues to chase her, so she locks herself in the gym storage room to eat her lunch and he tries to talk to her, but Yoshino takes him away. In the afternoon, Aki decides that she needs a makeover, and goes to a hair salon and gets a haircut. Later. When Yoshino sees Aki's short hair, she succumbs to her and says that it was all a trick, and demands that she go see Masamune right now, he is waiting for her at school. When Aki leaves, Yoshino thinks that this is how Aki felt when she went looking for Masamune that night, but now she is at peace because her feelings are in order, she just needed to let them out. Meanwhile, Aki looks for Masamune at school and only finds a letter in their classroom and thinks that he wants to make fun of her like she did in the past. So when she sees him, she runs away from him and he chases her all over the school and they can't help but relive all the memories from last year. When Masamune finally catches up to her, he says that he wants to apologize to her but Aki immediately cuts him off and tells him that he shouldn't apologize for dating Yoshino. That puzzles Masamune and he says that he is not dating her. It turns out that weeks ago, when Yoshino went to look for him and kissed him, she confessed that she loved him and needed to tell him in person, and he told her that he also wants to tell another person his feelings, because his time in the mountain gave him the answer he was looking for. Masamune's hives were because he never apologized to Aki for planning an unfair revenge against her. Then Masamune apologized to Aki for everything and tells her to open the letter that she has in her hands. In it, he asks her if she wants to be his girlfriend, since this time they have been sincere with each other. She is still insecure because since he did not turn the past, she thought that she had no appeal as a woman, so she asks him if he could kiss her. And although he is nervous, he kisses her, but it is not a simple kiss, but a real kiss, so Aki punches him for crossing the line so quickly. Months later is the post-party of the school festival, and while the students prepare to dance at the bonfire, Yoshino and Niko watch them. 
They'd remember how last year there was a Snow White competition and the couple that won was Aki and Kanetsuru. But since Masamune replaced her in the play, no one remembered that the winner was going to dance with Aki at the bonfire. They watch as Aki and Masamune prepare to dance, and Nico says that she was wrong to think that Masamune like Yoshino, and she says that the reason Masamune doesn't get hives when he is close to her is because he blindly trusts her as his friend and feels safe with her. Meanwhile, near the bonfire, Aki laughs saying that last year she almost danced with Kanetsuru, but Masamune confesses that he, even with a fever, was going to stop them. And to close a perfect day, he chivalrously asks her to dance with him, and she laughingly tells him that she has a perfect nickname for him, but she will tell them later because now she wants to dance with him.